Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the daily chart of silver provided by knitdania.com. You can click on the link below. Now you can see here we got a pretty decent bounce with the EU announcement on interest rates and that's going to be the main story of the night we're going to go into in a bit here. But if you look here, I've been following this trend line for quite some time and you can see that I had pointed out that $20 was going to be a breakout of this trend and we got a touch of that price and then turned down. So you can see now we're actually at the point where $19.50 is gonna be a, a change of this trend. Now, are we still gonna get that that break down to $15 or so and, and back up? I don't know, but uh, they're painting themselves into a corner and things are coming to a turning point here one way or the other now let's get to that main story that has to do with the interest rates in the eu now the first thing i want to show you is the chart of the euro us dollar chart and you can see that right here so you got that announcement you can see about 7 45 a.m this morning and then we get a big rally in the euro then an enormous crash in the euro and then a big recovery and uh, we'll put the volume up so you can see that so looks like the people who made the initial bets right there with the rally were correct and uh, they profited on this central bank manipulation ploy which is all that this is anyway so i wanted to examine this and look at the level of insanity of these central planners and their failed economies because that's really what we're talking about here we're talking about failed economies we're talking about the failed economies of japan because they're the first ones that went into this thing and by the way let's pull up the nikkei so we can look at that real quick here because if you remember the situation in japan started out with the collapse of the nikkei index and it was only a reaction to that that uh, we got the interest rates going to zero in japan so you can see on a long-term chart i guess we're going to have to go out all the way to the monthly to get a, a good picture on that you can see in a long-term chart, we had that collapse all the way back here in 1990. And basically, Japanese stocks have declined ever since. We had this little rally here up to about 16,000. Now we're turning back down. So the Japanese have still lost more than 50% of the value of their financial assets. And if we calculate from 1990 to 2015 that's 25 years we're going on a lost three decades and that is apparently what is coming for the u.s and europe and that's a very sad thing so these are these are dead economies these are dead uh policies they simply don't work but let's read the news story here this is from the new york times Europe gets negative interest rates. What does that even mean? First, there was ZERP. Now get ready for NERP. The first zero interest rate policy, the strategy for trying to stimulate economic growth in the United States. How's that worked out so far? Has undertaken for the last five and a half years and the Bank of Japan much longer than that. The second is a negative interest rate policy, and that's what the European Central Bank put in place on Thursday for the 18 nations that use the euro currency. That makes this a good moment for curious mental exercise of pondering what a negative interest rate even means and why it's something that monetary policy mavens have been talking about more than they would like over the last half decade. What is a negative interest rate? When a bank pays 1% interest rate, it's clear what happens. If you deposit your money at the bank, it will pay you a penny each year for every dollar you deposited. When the interest rate is negative, the money goes the other direction. 
We're talking about central banks here, but the same notion applies. Commercial banks maintain their reserves electronically at a central bank like the Federal Reserve in the United States or an arm of the European Central Bank in Europe. In normal times, well, I thought, I thought we had a recovery. Do, do we have a recovery? Are these normal times? In normal times, they're paid an interest rate set by the central bank for reserves they keep on deposit beyond what is needed to meet regulatory requirements. If the ECB moves to a negative interest rate, they will instead have to pay the central bank to park money there. Put bluntly, normally the banks pay you to keep your money there. Under negative rates, you pay them for the privilege. Why would the ECB do that? Inflation in Europe has fallen far below the 2% or so that the central bank aims for. Unemployment remains high in much of the continent and growth sluggish. So here we have these Keynesians, Keynesian morons. That's the only way to describe these people. Uh, the, I think what's the famous quote? Um, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So these people have been putting interest rates as low as they possibly can, and they're expecting unemployment to respond to that. Now, we know the unemployment situation in Europe is absolutely tragic, especially amongst the youth. We have at least a third and possibly even a half of the youth in Europe simply withering away, wasting their lives away, uh, being unemployed. And of course, growth is sluggish. So if this policy worked, wouldn't you think it would have worked by now? Or we have to get negative interest rates for this policy to work. So these people, they these are failed economies these are failed leaders and really honestly these people should be rounded up they should be put on trial and they should be put in prison for the rest of their lives because they are criminally negligent at running their economies that's the only way to describe it let's continue the central bankers usual answer to that set of problems is simple cut interest rates but with the ecb already paying zero percent on deposits that banks park with it, the only way to cut rates further is to go into negative territory. The theory is that when it becomes more costly for European banks to keep money in the ECB, they will have incentive to do something else with it, lend it out to consumers or businesses, for example. Well, has that happened so far? Or is there something else that causes them to do that? Don't you think they would have asked that question by now? Or if negative rates make it less attractive for global investors to park money in Europe, it could cause the euro to fall on currency markets, helping reverse a rise in its value that has made European exporters less competitive. Well, did that happen? Is that what happened today? Or did somebody jump in really quick and go the other way? What does that mean? I don't know. So let's go over to Wikipedia. There's a big Wikipedia entry on interest rates, and this really isn't rocket science. If you think about it, interest rate is just simply the amount of money that you pay somebody to borrow money, and it has to be a positive number. If you don't have a positive number for interest rates, that's like having a flat line on a heart rate monitor you're talking about a dead economy. And that's what you have in Japan. You have a dead economy. You have that in Europe. It's beginning in Europe. It's coming to the United States. These are failed economies. These are failed systems. And these are uh, failed leadership. Here's the Fed funds rate. You can see conveniently it's uh, 1954 through 2009. So, But trust me, it's flatlined right there. So let's look at this comment here on Wikipedia, and again, this is Wikipedia, this is about as accurate as Snopes, which is two people uh, typing on their computer in their basement. But uh, nevertheless, let's go through this. Negative interest rates. Nominal interest rates are normally positive, but not always. Given the alternative of holding cash and thus earning 0% rather than lending it out, profit seek 
profit-seeking lenders will not lend below 1%, you think? <laughs> As they will guarantee a loss and a bank offering a negative deposit rate will find few takers as savers will instead hold cash. During the European sovereign debt crisis, government bonds of some countries, Switzerland, Denmark, Germany, Finland, the Netherlands, and Austria have been sold at negative yields. Suggested explanations include desire for safety and protection against the Eurozone breaking up, in which case some Eurozone countries might re-denominate their debt into a stronger currency. More often, real interest rates can be negative when nominal interest rates are below inflation. When this is done by a government policy, for example, via reserve requirements, this is deemed financial repression and was practiced by countries such as the United States and the United Kingdom following World War II until the late 70s and early 80s. In the late 70s, United States Treasury securities with negative real interest rates were deemed certificates of confiscation. Negative interest rates have been proposed in the past, notably in the late 19th century by Silvio Giselle. A negative interest rate can be described as by Giselle as a tax on holding money. He proposed it as the free gold, free money component of his Freischwaft, free economy system, Freischwaft to prevent people from holding cash and thus earning 0%. Giselle suggested issuing money for a limited duration after which it must be exchanged for new bills. Attempts to hold money thus result in it expiring and becoming worthless. Along similar lines, no doubt, John Maynard Keynes appro approvingly cited the idea of carrying tax on money. 1936, the general theory of employment, interest in money, but dismissed it due to administrative difficulties. More recently, a carry tax on currency was proposed by a Federal Reserve employee, Marvin Goodfriend, in 1999 to be implemented by a magnetic strips on bills deducting the carry tax upon deposit, the tax being based on how long the bill had been held. It had been proposed that a negative interest rate can in principle be levied on existing paper by a serial number lottery, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the result that we have of these central banker, uh, central planner, failed leadership, failed politicians and central bankers. That's what you get. You get a negative interest rate. And you can see that uh, the result of Keynesianism is absolute failure. Uh, that's what we have now. Japan has been doing the same thing for 25 years. Is that what Europe is going to do? And is that what the United States is going to do? It's possible that that's the case. But uh, really, honestly, just for everybody's best interest, hopefully in Europe and the United States, I hope that this system blows up before that happens because Japan is in has been in financial repression for so long and has suffered so much if they would have just simply taken their medicine in 1990 and let all the bad debts be cleared they wouldn't have had to suffer 25 years of a dead economy that's what's happening in Europe right now and you can see this in the chart hopefully this is going to goose gold and silver and get them to rally. You can see the response with gold here. It was a pretty big response. I'm not really sure why, and I'm not really sure what's behind this. If we take a look at the volume, you can see that that is a historical spike within the last, we're talking May 8th on this chart. So if we pull up the one hour, you can see that that takes us back to about March 23rd was the last time we had that type of volume come into gold. And you can see this, this volume is clearly on the long side. When we look at silver, you can see that that spike is about thir in third place compared to the spikes that we had. Uh, one in about April the 2nd and the other one March 23rd. And I pointed out before, of course, that these spikes are absolutely absurd. You can see 600,000 contracts and uh, you know that a million contracts is is 5 billion ounces of silver. So 
they're trading some some days they're actually trading five to ten years amount of silver that can be mined in a year so it's uh it's absolute insanity what they're doing but it looks like some people are taking positions here that we may find that bottom and as i said earlier we're talking about nineteen dollars and fifty cents now is going to be the key point we can draw the lines differently but if we draw them i would say the most liberally we can see here that at about nineteen dollars and fifty cents if we went straight up to that price you can see that's going to be a breakout if we don't go straight up to 1950 then the breakout is actually going lower and lower it's really not that much longer you can see if you look here that uh, sometime in august it, a break above 19 dollars will actually take us into new highs and uh, it looks like some fireworks are coming very very soon with this negative interest rate policy and these failed economies and we'll talk to you next time